Certainly as, as a councillor and uh, just being a member of Ainthu, an awful lot of people in their hundreds have come to us asking the questions as to why the government has not started the process to investigate nursing home deaths due to COVID. Um, there's an awful lot of very sad, bereaved, bereft families out there and they're not being listened to. People are going to solicitors to take cases because they feel at this stage that the, the government has closed the door. And there's no doubt, because I, I raised, I submitted a motion to my own um, uh, full council meeting asking the councillors to support me in a bid to have this inquiry um, called for. And the Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael councillors all didn't, um, refused to support the motion because a lot of people know that this was not handled as well as the government would like to, 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 you know, to convey. And people are afraid that stuff is going to come to the surface that is unpleasant or reflects badly on the competence of this government. And so people are just hoping that, that we'll go away and the questions will stop being asked. Uh, what do you think of the fact that earlier this year the Taoiseach made some comments, I'm going to paraphrase because I can't remember his exact quote, but he essentially said that we shouldn't make any kind of COVID inquiry into too much of a witch hunt or go after people too much who might have been making mistakes during the pandemic because then it'll hamper our ability to act in future if there's another pandemic in a few years time. What, what do you think of that? Look, I, I can I can see the genuine concerns relating to that, but this isn't a witch hunt by any means. This is seen, trying to see what procedures, what measures were put in place by the government, by the HSE management, that caused cracks in the in the in the process, that caused decisions to be made where patients were moved from hospitals into nursing homes without being tested. I mean, this is not trying to you know hammer staff for not doing their job or not working twelve hours when they worked eleven. We all know that the, the, the HSE staff were phenomenal. Most of them went above and beyond. This is not about that. But decisions at management level led to people dying before their time. And that is what we're trying to find out. Because as you say, we're going to have new waves of new viruses in the future. If we don't work out now what led to the errors in the past, how are we going to be able to deal with the future errors? Uh, it seems like a lot of the data out of countries like Sweden would indicate that the lockdown that Ireland in implemented and that many other European countries implemented simply didn't work and really didn't yield the results that we were promised it would. And the government don't seem to have done much reflection on that. Do, do you think that there needs to be an analysis at the big picture level about what went wrong with our overall strategy and not just uh, on, on the micro level, little decisions that we made but that we might have gotten the whole thing wrong at a systemic level. Yeah, no, that's a very, very good point because the overall decisions that, that caused our society to go into shutdown for such a long period of time, we know has caused a lot of problems. And we don't even know the results of those problems because they're only going to unfold in the next six months, in the next year. So again, it, it relates back to in order to fix something or to do a better job the next time, we have to examine who did what? Was it done in the right way? Are there better ways of doing it? And look to other countries and see what successes they had and see if we can replic replicate them here. But, you know, it's so important that people realise that none of us are trying to, you know, hammer people on this. We're trying to hammer the processes and the procedures if they weren't good and how we can find better solutions in the future. Because there's no doubt about it, lockdown has, has caused terrible consequences on the people in this country. If you look at a lot of elder people, some of these people have not returned to society. They are sitting in their houses day in, day out, afraid to come back out. And I just think that is a tragedy that hasn't really been dealt with properly. Uh, apart from the lengthening of waiting lists, uh, Gript was just speaking to Family Carers Ireland and we were talking about how many children who have intellectual disabilities uh, have experienced a regression in their uh, development as far as speech and even things like toilet training because of the lack of socialization that they've had over the past two years being isolated at home and that that's actually negatively impacted them and so they've lost years critical years of their development that they're not going to get back. Do you think that's going to be an increasing problem over the next, say, decade? Or do, do we really fully understand the implications of what's happened? 
No, there's no doubt we don't understand because I suppose in some ways we've never experienced anything like this before. And we do know that there's a window of an opportunity that when young children with intellectual disabilities make progress and that obviously whilst those windows were shut or you know narrowed certainly in the last two years. So there has to be a greater effort by the HSE and the government to try and make up for lost time because as I say that window of opportunity wasn't there during the, 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 the number of years in question and you know these children we want them to have as full and, and to reach their potential and have lives that are you know hugely beneficial to themselves obviously and to their families so I do feel that this is an area that needs far more exploration but I don't want all the time to go into that I want the children to be at the centre of this you know yourself that they would have had um, online classes and stuff like that stuff that really was of no benefit to them these children need teachers in the flesh beside them obviously that wasn't permitted at the time but I certainly feel that you know, hours should be increased, money, serious money should be thrown at this to try and bring these children back up to where they would have been had this not happened in the first place.